Hi, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to review a pen that is the Faber Castell Basic with the chrome finish. This pen has already been featured in a illogical purchase video where I explain where I bought the pen at the flea market and how much I did pay for it, very low, a uh, very low price, and what I did to, to fix the nib of this pen. Um, I will put the, the link in the description below. So, this pen, let's take a look a, a, about this, uh, this pen and to see its features. So, this is a range from Faber Castell. As far as I know, this has been um, discontinued and replaced for another very similar model. So, what we have here? We have uh, a pen with a very long uh, barrel, metal barrel, chrome, made of chrome, uh, made of uh, metal and then it's chromed. Um, then we have here the, a cap that is made of plastic and a clip. On the top of the cap we don't have anything, just this weird angle before the clip. But this angle, maybe it allows for this kind of movement of the clip and the clip. I must say is very very good. On the side of the cap we have Faber Castell since nineteen uh, since seventeen sixty one. On the bottom of the barrel we have anything, but it it has this depression which is quite nice to 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 touch, and this is it. The pen feels very very back heavy because the the barrel is really made of metal very heavy when you open the pen and it just slips off the cap clicks in place here on this ring uh, it has a plastic section as you can see and when you open it it has these transparent threads on the barrel i don't really know why because there is no much use of it it's not quite an ink window um, and you have, it takes cartridge or uh, converters as you want, international cartridge. Um, and this is it. What can I say about the pen? This is not quite a fair review because this pen is not new. This pen is it's not a vintage pen also. It is a pen that I found very well used, um, very beat up as is possible to see all the surface of this chrome e has very very um, slight scratches i think i can polish this out also the cap has some blemishes to it has some red ink here uh, i can't take this off here it is so worn out that it lost its silvery uh, plastic color here also and there and also on the section there is also missing here the, this silvery plating um, and you can see there more reddish thing the pen has red ink inside but this is not because of this red ink these were already here when i bought the pen and if i try to polish this more i will wear off the the rest of the finish so i let it stay here so this is not a fair uh, review because when you find the pen new, it won't be. It won't look like that. About the nib, the pen has a uh, steel nib. This is a B nib. It has the Faber Castell logo there be, uh, beneath the, the B from broad nib. This nib is the uh, from that uh, you can unscrew the the. Um, feet and nib all together. There is this black color that uh, holds everything in place. And you can replace this for another, if you want, if you have another um, Faber-Castell nibs around. The nib is quite good. This one has been restored by me. It was very badly bent. Cosmetically, it is not perfect, but it works. Uh, but if you find one, you'll find a very good nib because 
every Faber Castell nib that I found so far is great. Even this one that was ruined, I just had to uh, unbend the nib and then it wrote well. So I, I really think these nibs are very good. About the writing experience, and this is the, the thing that I can say best. This is a pen that can be posted and it posts very securely. Because the barrel is very, very heavy, the, the cap on the back of the barrel, because it's made of plastic, it's not heavy at all. Um, it, it posts very securely here on this recess here on the, on the back of the, of the barrel. So you can use it like this, but it becomes an enormous pen. It makes no sense to post this pen. But they don't say you have to, so don't post it. About the balance, I think that is the biggest problem of this pen. This barrel is very long and very, very heavy. This is very heavy metal. And this is made of a very thin plastic. Let me try to show you. If I remove the cartridge, you can look inside and you see this is a very thin shell. So it is very, very, very light. And this way, when you hold the pen, you have a very back weighted pen. Uh, and even though the section is not slippery, you can find the, the pen going down because of its weight and you can't find the, the best way to, the best spot to hold the pen. However, this is a pen that can still be found, for example, at Apple Boom for around 30 euros and it will write well. So if this pleases you, it's a go for it because it is a good writing instrument. I just feel that this pen, it just needed to have a lighter barrel or a heavier section. One of those and it would be a great pen. It's not, it's just the only thing that doesn't work for me. However, I paid two euros for this pen. I had the chance to, to try to work on a nib. So I'm quite pleased with it and I don't like broad nibs, so I use these with uh, reds and greens and uh, oranges and this is a good pen to underline text. Now that you've seen the pen, let's see just a size comparison. And here you have a Parker Centennial Dufold. It is the same size and also a Lamy Safari. So as you can see, they are very, very comparable and you may try to To unscrew that to, to uncap them and you'll see the size comparison the faber castell is the longest of all so this can be still found at apple boom this one is a little longer than it should because it is still with the the, the ring it's a, a mint pen uh, it's the collection for 2019 of lamy safari which was sent by fonto plumo and this one is a discontinued parker centennial default so now that we have seen the pen and the size comparison, let's go for the writing sample. And here we are. This is the Faber Castell Basic with a B nib. The ink inside is the Caveco Ruby Red. And the paper is the usual Rhodia dot pet. So uh, about the pen, the, the, the writing of the pen. This pen has a very smooth nib. This nib was bent. I fixed it as far as I know, and it writes with writes very well with just that slight hint of feedback that it is usual on Faber-Castell pens. I've used this the, the bean nib on a Faber-Castell pen before in another pen and I must say that this one writes, it doesn't look like one, but it writes like a, a, a normal broad uh, Faber-Castell uh, nib in good condition. So you'll have 
a fairly wet B nib, but it's not a, um, a very very wet one. It is wet enough for the for this kind of nib, but it's not a, the wettest of the pens. But it delivers very well. It writes very smoothly. You can write upside down and it writes with a very thinner line. So you have the regular line and this is the with the nib upside down. About line variation. You usually can't have a lot with Faber Castell nibs and I won't force this one because this has been already forced uh, back and forth and I don't think it is a good thing to try to do it again. So, as you can see, this pen delivers very well, it writes really really good. It's not a very broad nib, but it is what usually the Faber-Castell broad nibs are. So, I would say I'm quite happy with this because I was able to bring this pen back to life, but it is not the most comfortable pen because it is very back weighted. What you'll feel is that you'll be holding the pen here instead of there to have more uh, to, ha to hold the pen more in the center and to have a better balance. So if you can live with that, I think this is a nice pen. So I, now I have to thank you all for watching the video and if you want to keep watching our videos, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. So, see you next time. Bye.